when you think about it, uh, you've been covering Baker Mayfield for a long time now. And what what do you see as the ultimate difference in who he is today and what he was three years ago, four years ago? I think maybe the I think maybe the point is that there isn't a difference anymore, right? That 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 what he's now what he is now is kind of back to what he was once upon a time, and in between was the doubting himself Baker a little bit. And so I think what we're back to is confident, comfortable Baker Mayfield. Now, confident and comfortable comes in a variety of ways. You want to have the offense and the scheme and the plan and the people around him that maximizes talent. But when Baker believes it, when he believes in his offensive line, when he believes in the play call, when he doesn't have happy feet, escape a clean pocket, when he follows his mechanics and rips those throws in the middle of the field and reads defenses and lets it go, I mean, he was an accurate quarterback. He was a winning quarterback. He was a dynamic quarterback. And, like, that's what we're back to. So that's the great part is you're back to Baker Mayfield, able to be Baker Mayfield because Kevin Stefanski, I think, has settled him down. I think has given him something to believe in with play action, the bootlegs, the kind of plays they run. And now you see Baker. And then you have Jarvis Landry and Rashard Higgins, a couple of receivers he really believes in. And, and you have two tackles. You changed the tackles, and I think it changed his life. You know, that out, interior of the offensive line was pretty good, but the way Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin have played this year and the way Chris Hubbard's played when he was in there, backing him up, I mean, I just think you're you're allowing Baker to be at his best self because you got everything settled around him here in year three. And, and something settled by itself. And, it, you know, you'd think if your, your best offensive weapon or, or scariest one gets injured, you say, well, how can you be better without him? But that certainly seems the case with Odell Beckham Jr. So this is my, it's not a theory. I think it's my explanation on this is when you have a dynamic receiver who you feel like you want to get the ball to and you don't feel confident in yourself, then I do believe that that type of player can be a burden in that you're like, listen, I'm not playing well. I'm not seeing it, but I got to get him the ball. And now it's a weight on you. So I do think that was the case with Baker at times last year and this year. But now, I think it's coincidental. I think it's progress that Baker is playing better without Odell. I think it's on the Stefanski path. I think Baker was going to get to this point just with time in this system anyway. But now, if you added Odell back into this, he is calm, confident, comfortable Baker Mayfield. So now, he would not view Odell Beckham as, oh man, I got him. got to get him the ball. Now I think he would view it as, oh, I get to get him the ball. So I don't think he 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 got better because Odell left. I think that's the the timing of the path was that it matched up. But I don't believe that and, and if so you added the bye Odell, week out bad. It'd be good. The the timing of the bye week worked out well too. Yeah. It, uh, For sure. And, A lot know, of things he, coalesced. He he made some throws against the Giants the other night that Looked like he, he was threading the needle, um, but he, he had no concerns about it. He, he's letting it go, and you're saying, no, don't throw that. And then you say, oh, eat, nice throw. Um, he was I, I thought he was almost perfect the other night, even though the, the, uh, the stats aren't going to uh, well up there. But um, he, he's, he's been terrific. I'm, actually, I'm surprised he didn't make the Pro Bowl, even though the Pro Bowl doesn't mean anything. A lot of good quarterbacks. I mean, it's it's just nice the Browns have one of them, right? They're, they're, this is this is quite a time for quarterbacks in this league and in the AFC. I don't know why anybody. Well, I do know why. Plays zone against Baker Mayfield right now. If you play zone and you let him sit back, he's seeing it. He's seeing everything right now. It's not fooling him, and he believes in his guys. And when he sees it and he believes it, he rips it. He's got the arm talent to do it. When they face a team that's willing to play man coverage. And, and run with these guys without Odell Beckham, I think that's when you would miss Odell Beckham because our Jarvis Landry, Rashard Higgins, and Austin Cooper guys who are just going to beat man coverage every single time the way Odell might, that's how you make it hard on Baker. But if you don't have the players to do it, if either philosophically you want to play zone or you don't believe in your corners enough to play man, they're at the point with Stefanski's play calling and the way Baker's seeing it and ripping it that he is going to do that against the zone, I think, most of the time, nine times out of ten. And it's exactly what you're talking about, Les, that he just believes his guys are going to be there. And when he believes it, he rips it. And it looks incredibly efficient and like a defense isn't going to stop. 